Well, I guess if no one remembers, I'll just do some problems that should refresh our memories a little bit. So, oh, number 12, thank you. Thank you, this is so nice that you remembered that. So exercise 12, yeah, I'm looking at it and now I also start to recognize that divergent series. The reason it's divergent is because the n's term, which is n divided by three n plus two is not going to zero, right? So we say that if n's term is not approaching to zero, then we have a divergent series. And to find this out, so all you have to write is divergent, but you could also take the limit of that n's term and to use either L'Hopital's rule or whatever method you prefer by taking derivatives of numerator and denominator, I'm getting one or three. It is not zero. So the terms are approaching to one third. So why one third is no good, one can say. Well, the reason is that if you have one third, then no matter how large number is, you just need enough one thirds and you're gonna exceed it. See, that's the point of story. So if you have your nth term that does not go to zero, then take enough terms, maybe billion, maybe trillion. So if you take one third times n, you're gonna exceed just about any number. You want a trillion, then take one third times four trillion or 20 trillion or quadrillion and you will get over and that's the idea. So if it's not bounded, then it's divergent. This is pretty odd, some people say, because we actually have terms that cancel each other, right? Well, there are infinitely many of them. And I wanted to, I don't wanna use word shock you, but that's probably what it is by looking at the Fourier series transformations that says, if you have the sign alternating series that converges, then it can converge to any real number. How would you like that? I say to number seven or to number one-fifths or to negative 11. Any means any real number. And the mathematician with the name Riemann proved that a long time ago. And the proof is not a secret if you'd be interested in those Riemann sum theorems, then you could even Google this and find the very amazing fact. So if you look at the sign alternating series like we have here, and if you start to rearrange its terms, they gave you a couple of examples. On one hand, the series goes to ln of two. On the other hand, it goes to a half of ln of two. And that's pretty interesting. So I guess that's the flavor of uh, next level of math analysis classes where whenever you encounter infinite series, things are not going out of hand, but uh, get quite unintuitive sometimes. So I think if someone is interested in more math classes, eventually it could be something that you can think of it because truly pretty unusual. How come the sum of series could be any real number, right? That's pretty odd. Well, that's what it is.
So anyways, I'd like to abandon the story with the sine alternating series and move to the next section that actually all of the sections that we have here, they overlap. So I cannot really say that one section is different than the other section much because the exercises are very, very similar. We just learn more tests for conversions or divergence. And once we know more of these tests, then the life gets easier for doing the exercises. So here's another test. You're looking at the series sum of a n, and it could be sign alternating. So we already learned that some series could alternate their signs. So it could be sign alternating. That's why they're looking at absolute values. And these absolute values <laughs> simply stand for everything being positive. That's really all they care about. So if quotient is less than one, then it's going to be convergent in absolute values. And if a quotient is greater than one, then it's going to be divergent. But when the quotient is equal to one, then we're undecided if it's a convergent or divergent series, then we need to do something else. So this test is very popular. So what you do is you divide the next term by the previous term. So you can say an plus one by an. Now you want to take absolute values. In other words, just forget about minuses. And if it's less than one, then we have a convergence series. That's different. We did not really take terms of the same series and divide it one by the other. So let me get some exercises here that work with this. So how about the problem number 23? So I'm going to deal with the The sign alternating series in exercise number 23 that says take a series with negative one raised to various powers. So if I look at the limit of n plus first term divided by the nth term in absolute value, then minus one will be disregarded, right? And of course the limit is always when n goes to infinity because that's a series. And we say that the series sum of a n is convergent. In fact, even stronger than conversion, absolutely convergent, which means that if you disregard all of the minuses, then it's still going to be convergent. So nothing's going to compensate or cancel each other out. So let me write what a n plus one is. So I prepare this a little bit because I don't want to do this work and write all the limit and this quotient. So I better just put this n plus first term the following way. So my Numerator will be raised to the power of n plus one, and denominator will be n plus one factorial. So now when I also work with the n term, the only thing that has term n. So we got this. Uh, nth term, so I'm going to put this denominator, right, to the power of n over n factorial. Then I need not to have n plus ones, just n's. So I'm going to get this factored, so I can take out to the power of n and multiply it by 2. And similarly, I can I recall that factorial means we start at the largest and go 
smaller and smaller and smaller all the way to one. So I can treat it as this type of a fraction. So we have to the power of n times another two. And this is also divided by n plus one times n factorial, right? It looks like uh, there is lots of uh, factors that we are going to be able to cancel here. This is a big complex fraction. So we're going to either flip the second fraction or we can start canceling right away to the power of n or n factorial. And uh, then whatever is left should give you a limit. It looks like the limit is uh, what? What is the limit? Mm -hmm. When n approaches to infinity. Numerator has number two only, and denominator has n plus one. So what limit do we have? Zero, two over big, small, zero. Less than one, that's it. Absolutely convergent series, which means that our series without absolute values is also going to be convergent. So everything is convergent here, and this is great. So minus one did not participate in the process. Let me try another one and see what else is in this section. So it looks like whenever we have factorials, notice I didn't do many exercises with these factorials because I was saving them for the section six because it has a special test for factorials because you just cancel these factorials pretty well and uh, I guess that is nice because otherwise with those factorials, well, you don't have much flexibility. So you're gonna have to do various estimates and that's not really that straightforward. But now everything becomes nice and straightforward to just divide the terms and these factorials are gonna disappear. Let me do one more here with those factorials. How about the one with heavy factorials like exercise number 33, lots of terms here. Multiply it, right? So in this exercise, again, I need to know what a n plus 1 is. And uh, negative 1 is what I'm going to totally disregard. So I just put n plus 1 factorial. Because, again, what we're going to do is take the absolute value. And that's why we don't really care for positive or negative signs because they will turn into positives. So why bother to write? So numerator is just n plus one factorial in 33 minus one I disregard. And what's in denominator? It looks like it's a product of a bunch of odd numbers that will end at two n plus one. That's where Ian's term. And then there will be one more term, which is coming from two times. And instead of n, I put n plus one and plus one. So this is actually going to be two n plus three. In other words, next odd number, right? So to get another odd number, you get two n, which is even, and then you start adding one or two or one or three or five. So you get that. Okay, so let me take that new limit, n plus first divided by the n's term. And again, we concerned with this limit being less than one, series convergent, greater than one, series is divergent. Equals to one, we can't give the answer, need to do something else. So let us put these in so I can. Instead of a n plus one, have n plus one times n factorial, right? So I can factor this a little bit so I could cancel it with my denominator. 
For the bottom part, I go one, three, five, dot, dot, dot. Then I get that two n plus one times two n plus three. And that's great. So now we're gonna take the n's term and we can just flip it. So this n's term that we have here without negative one, I can flip right away. So I put n factorial in denominator, right? And in numerator, all this product one, three, five, dot, 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 all the way to two n plus one. And then you see that all of these factorial guys are gonna nicely disappear. And I guess that's kind of fun. I love to cancel, let's cancel these guys. You cancel the product all the way up to two n plus one. And now you can see, I hope that a limit we have is less than one because all we left on the top is n plus one and on the bottom is two n plus three. So taking derivatives and numerator, you get one, derivative and denominator, you get two, less than one, again, conversion, absolutely serious. Well, don't get it wrong because some of them will diverge. I just uh, got some of the conversion series and uh, that's well, helpful. So there is another test. There is so-called root test that appears in this section. That is very, very similar to my ratio test, the ratio n plus first term divided by the nth term. But now the root, <coughs> the nth root actually, from nth term behaves the same way. So if you have a limit, when n approaches to infinity is less than one. Of course, they take absolute value because we want to make sure that you can extract even radicals, like square root, force root, and so forth. Well, then you get that conversions as well. So it's very, very similar conclusion, and it's uh, Next theorem here that says if the n truth is less than one, we have absolute conversions, and it's divergent if n truth is greater than one. So we got this. When you say, what about limit the n is infinity? Well, it is greater than one. So I'm not sure why they write it because it is infinity is greater than one. So again, it's inconclusive when it's exactly equal to one. And this special test I'll use whenever we have n's powers everywhere. When you have everything raised to the n's power, no factorials, nothing like that. Like for example, problem number nine here. I see that in the problem nine, I wanna show the section as well, but it doesn't seem to show. So let me bring it down. So in the problem number nine, you see the power in on the outside, the whole thing, right? And that's why this problem just begs me to get rid of that n's power on the outside. So the limit of the n's term with a n's root extracted will be a five n without the power on the outside. Divided by 5n minus three, of course, was a limit. And looks like it's a uh, number one, right? Because when you cancel this ends or take derivatives, you get one. And you say, Alex, so it is inconclusive then. Yes, because we can't say anything at this stage because our root test gave you 
number one. Let's see where that is. Just to stress it again. See, it's inconclusive where limit equal to one. Well, that's okay. So since it's equal to one, I have to do it a little bit differently. And that's all I wanna utilize here, something different. So we are going to use some other test. When you say, would you actually try the ratio test, that other favorite in here? Yeah, you can try it. Oh, actually, sorry, I didn't write it correctly. Uh, it's 4N on the top, you see that? Four, uh -huh. see, I better clean this mess. I better not worry about it. So they give you nice exercises. I'm kind of surprised that it happened to be equal to one. So it's actually not one, it's what? It's coefficients, right? Four fifths. Ah, uh, conversion, four fifths. See, it's designed. That's why I was surprised that's in the very beginning of section, they already give you some like unusual looking question. So it is indeed conversion series and that's really all we got. I say, so what if uh, you had the n multiplied by five and uh, five n on the bottom as well? Would you be able to do anything here if they cancel? Well, I think that uh, the n term would approach to one. Five or one, five is one. Even if you answer root number one, it's still one. Any power of number one is one, right? So that's why it's going to be divergent. So just to try to find the limit of that term, then you're going to get five or five, and then raised to the power of n. So it is going to be divergent. So interesting stories in here. And uh, the good part again, that the uh, exercises are pretty nice and short. And I think there is one very useful summary of everything that we have done up to today is here in this table. So today I don't wanna give you a quiz. I think we had enough quizzes last week. So maybe I'll let you go without a quiz, but before, letting you go, I want you to look at this awesome summary table. You could mark that page for yourself because it's very nicely collected all the information in the same place on page 670. <clears throat> so we see everything that we saw up to date, such as the and storm is not zero, we already saw it. So series is gonna be divergent. If you have geometric series, then you need the ratio to be less than one. So it's convergent. And if it's greater than or equal to one, divergent. See, there is a column for convergence and there's a column for divergence. Ants terms, I don't really care for the ants sums. Because you can find one for a geometric series, but for the others, I guess it's not that straightforward. So I disregarded that. Then what else we saw? P series, depending on the power. Power is big, series is conversion. Power is less than one or equal to one, diversion. So P series, like one over N, the harmonic series, and so forth. Now, alternating sign series that we were working on last time and again continued today. So this series is going to need to have a limit of n's term equal to zero. So just like uh, here, if it's not equal to zero, that limit is diversion. But if it is equal to, then it's conversion. But that's not sufficient here. So here we can't say that. And we had a bunch of counter examples, like one over n series was diversion. So another test was integral test. So you integrate your series 
And if it's a finite, it's convergent. If it's not finite or infinite, it's diversion. So that's a convenient test. Now, today we saw another two tests that are kind of similar. Either nth root or the quotient must be less than one for conversions. Or if those uh, greater than one, then series will be not conversion diversion. So this is what we have here so far. And then finally, the comparison of series, they put it at the end because this is something that we already did a little bit and uh, it's kind of specific to each series. It's not really that straightforward. And the point is if series is dominated by convergent, so if uh, you look at the convergent BN, then smaller terms also will give you a convergent series. And if it's actually dominates BN, so if terms are bigger, then if smaller is divergent, then the actual series is divergent. And there is one more test that I have at the very end, and that test was also a great test that we were using when we had two series, two series, AN and BN. And we were dividing their terms. And if you produce a finite number, then it's convergent. And if the number is going to be infinite, it's not stated here very clearly. In both cases, it says greater than zero. But if it's finite, then it's going to be divergent. So if one is divergent, so is the other. If one is convergent, so is the other. That's the image. So I guess that's the page that I wanted to definitely look at. So this page is in that new section. That's a nice summary page. And now I want to see what we did so far. And it looks like we're going to have a few more class meetings, actually six more, because we're going to have a final on Tuesday, first week of me and I'm going to do a review like we did before on Thursday so not counting today's class we're going to have only six class meetings left one more on this week and one on that last week of class and then there'll be two more weeks in between and then we're going to power what remains here selectively. So I wanted to show you that we now are done with ratio and root tests. They say that this material is not necessary, it's optional, but I think that power series are very important to cover. So I'm gonna cover them because this is something that you will see a lot in differential equations class or if you take more math, then it'll be a useful section. And uh, section 10.1, I usually skip because that's uh, ellipses, hyperbolas, parabolas, that's intermediate algebra. So I guess you hopefully already know it. And the new stuff will be 10.2, 10.3, 10.4. I'm not sure about 10.5. I'll try if time permits to cover it, it shows the uh, practice that it's rare that we have time for this. I'd rather just slow down and concentrate more on four sections of chapter 10. And that'd be the plan. So I think we're in a very good shape in terms of covering the material because next class, if you sign up for Calc 3, we'll start with chapter 11, vectors and so forth. And that's Nice, nice chapter. Turns out pretty straightforward, so you will definitely enjoy it. But then later there will be, of course, things that come up. So as I said, I didn't plan for a quiz today. 
I think you deserve to have a little break from that. Next time I will give you a quiz. We'll look at the, well, some exercises. We'll decide which one to give for the quiz. So I'm going to stop for today. I think it's plenty.